So understanding how vehicles behave during atmospheric reentry uh, will help give future spacecraft developers some unique information that can uh, enhance their design efficiencies and safety. Uh, one experiment uh, that has had three successful flights to gather this never before collected information. Uh, why don't we join Lori Meggs now out at the Payload Operations Integration Center at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama to learn more about the reentry breakup recorder. Lori? It's a wild ride for the reentry breakup recorder, but an important one. It tests a system that rides a space vehicle, then records data as it reenters the atmosphere and breaks up, and then it returns that data for analysis. We spoke with Andrew Feistel from the Aerospace Corporation to find out more about this first of its kind test. We care about um, attaining reentry breakup data because there have been observational campaigns in the past that are watching reentries from cameras, kind of high level um, things we could pull from that data, but there's a real lack of, of real precise, detailed, real-time data that comes from the re-entering vehicle during that re-entry time frame. Um, that data is the data that Re Reber is recording and transmitting back to us. How is it transmitted back to you if this is it, breaking up? It is essentially a phone with a heat shield. It transmits via the Iridium satellite phone um, system and it does this all while still falling to the ground. There's only a few minutes we have of data communication time, but we get all of the data that we need that is essential about that initial reentry breakup process, and it comes to us on a website. How many times have you flown this reentry recorder? Uh, there have been four flights, all courtesy of ISS Resupply Craft. Um, three of the four flights were successful um, the one that was not successful, we just don't know why, never made the phone call. But the three that were successful um, gave data such as temperature, pressures, rotation rates, um, accelerations about the host vehicle that are helping us better define the survivability of future reentering space vehicles. So that is the goal, to, to find out how to to better our current models um, that are predicting survivability of space vehicles, re-entering space vehicles. What are you learning from the data? Uh, well, one of the main things we're learning from the data is is kind of these high-level altitude regions of which significant events are happening, and we're seeing at least with these these three ISS resupply craft that have returned data, um, the major significant breakup events tend to be happening about 74 to 70 kilometers. Uh, I call that out specifically because there's a historical 78 kilometers that is used somewhat as an input to a lot of current modeling uh, simulations and the, the specific altitude that the breakup event occurs has a huge impact on the footprint, the debris field when it goes down all the way to the ground. Um, kind of like a shotgun, the, the closer or further away from you, the faster it will disperse. The first data ever recorded during the breakup reentry occurred on JAXA's HTV2 vehicle after it departed the station. Now, the data returned by Reber has helped calibrate reentry breakup and reentry hazard prediction models worldwide, and there are two more tests planned for this in 2015.